Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and today I've got for you a mystery unboxing. Well, it's not really an unboxing because it's uh, already out of the envelope that it came in and it's simply wrapped in some foam like material. So I do not know how this fragrance smells. I bought it the other day on eBay for a, I believe a good price. It's a flanker from a well-known line of fragrances, but it's not a particularly new one, but it's also not one I've heard very much about, but what I have read sounds very much like it might be my cup of tea. I'm not putting details in the description box right now or on the title because I want it to be a mystery for you. Just, you know, keep the, keep the magic alive while you guess what I might have purchased. So actually, I was asked to do a little update on my financial kind of um, sensible choices that I'm trying to make at the moment. So this kind of is part of that because I'm on what you might call a slow buy, a much more considered approach to purchasing. And I have been trying to budget my finances, put more into paying off my mortgage, put more into savings, that kind of stuff. And I'm doing really well, I'm on track at the moment. I mean, we're, <laughs> we're not that far since I did that last video, but I did pay a chunk off my mortgage. I say a chunk, I paid uh, I had been saving just a little bit over sort of the period of a year or so and I had this money in an account that wasn't doing anything for me whatsoever, 0% interest and it just made no sense at all to keep it there and I decided to put that against my mortgage and I'm overpaying my mortgage almost twice as much as I'm supposed to and still managing to make little purchases and still have some money left for fun and stuff. So, so far so good, doing really well. Obviously we are in lockdown and a large part of my spending normally would be on things like drinking in pubs, meals in restaurants, meeting friends for lunch, that kind of stuff, going out for the day, a day to London could be quite expensive. So all of those things aren't happening. So therefore I have more budget if I want for perfume, but it makes no sense to spend everything on perfume when I could be potentially either investing it or knocking it off my mortgage or putting it into savings, etc. So, so far I'm on track. So there's a little update for you there. I have made two purchases since I got paid on perfume and one of them is here. The other one I only ordered last night. Both are budget. I don't know if you just heard that <laughs> a little belch that worked his way up there. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, both are what I would consult, consider affordable budget type options. This one cost me £30 and then the one I ordered last night, which I'm not going to tell you what that is either, cost me £23 including postage. It's a well-loved feminine marketed fragrance as uh, it's considered a really good cheapy in the sort of the ladies of Fragcom uh, circles. And I've heard about it over the years. I've heard lots of wonderful things about it. I'm not expecting to be blown away, but I wanted to try it. I wanted to add something new. And even if I end up swapping it out or reselling it, whatever, I really wanted to try it. So I've ordered that, but this today is all about this one here. Have you had a guess yet? A comment below what you think it might be or at least if you can guess the brand or perhaps even the line from the brand see if you, you can't really see a shape at the moment maybe you can a little bit there look oh what's that I think you probably get it now so let's have a look I'm kind of excited about this oh can you hear the noise do you like the noise or do you hate the noise <laughs> here we go oh my god see it now look there you can see can't you so what is it it's a flanker remember it's a flanker <gasps> here we are well, it better be it better be the um, the right one I don't know if this is the oh no it is okay I was worried then that this is just the original Le Petit Robe Noir it's not I've checked the bottom and it does say 
ma robe velours or velours my robe velours it means my velvet dress so velours means velvet so this is a flanker there's not that many about i couldn't see many when i did a little search for it i was between this one and the legere version because they sound like they've got notes that are really up my street i love this bottle i did used to have i think you that's the that's the the way you look at it so the writings on the front the dress is embossed on the back so you look at it like that and it's almost like a 3d effect I, I quite like that beautiful bottle so many years ago I did have the original Le Petit Robe Noir I was actually sent it to review not for YouTube I wasn't really doing or I'd only just started YouTube I was sent it by boots.com because they have panel testers. I'm still a panel tester for them now and they occasionally send me stuff. They haven't sent me perfume in a long time, but they sent it to me to just to do a little review on their website. And then I gave it to a friend because I liked it, but even then I still had quite a few other things. I didn't think I was gonna reach for it. So this is the Velour one, a velvet dress. And let's just give it a sniff. I think it's, it's a tester, I think it's brand new. I can't really remember if it's supposed to be brand new or not, but we're gonna go on here first. Yeah, I think it was brand new because the very first spray was, was empty. I smell it in the air. It does remind me of the original Le Petit Robe Noir, although I haven't smelt that in a long, long time. So I can't compare, I, I won't be able to compare for you how it compares. <laughs> go compare, go compare. Okay, if you're in the UK, you might know what that is. I like this. It's quite, it's got a freshness to it. It's a, it's a pretty, I think it's a cherry scent. It's definitely a, a berry or cherry kind of scent. Now, if I recall, the original Le Petit Robe Noir is a black cherry. And I'm getting that from this. Yeah, it's like, um... So it's not like Tom Ford Lost Cherry in that it's not got this really thick sweetness to it. This is a lighter, fresher, sweet and sour almost. So I think the cherry is noted as a sour cherry and I can kind of, there's sweetness and sourness here. And you know how cherry can have an almond nuance to it? It's doing that which I really like. But what I like is it's, Got a freshness to it so it is not one of those overly sweet gourmands because it's lightened up i don't know if there's citrus in here if there is it's not the kind of citrus note that's supposed to be noticed so sometimes fragrances open with citruses and you really smell the citruses and then they change if anything the citruses are a uh, it might just be a touch of bergamot or some, something's giving it a lighter, fresher feel, but it doesn't feel like you're supposed to notice that it's a specific citrus note, if that makes sense. And I smell a counteracting note to the sweetness. So, um, something like, now I can't remember the notes. I was looking at the notes the other night. It might be somewhere in my subconscious. I feel like I smell maybe a touch of vetiver or something that would traditionally be more, more in a ma man's marketed fragrance. So like a, um, a slightly dry, woody note, like a vetiver. Whether it's vetiver or not, I don't know. But what I like here is that there is that masculine-ish note playing with the more feminine sweet notes so it's nicely balanced so it's got a little bit of freshness a little bit of sweetness a little bit of sourness and a little bit of a a neutral kind of uh, like a vetiver or clean dry woods something like that it's almost losing some of its sweetness it's changing quite quickly Cherry note isn't as almondy as it was to start with, which is a shame. I 
I feel like the whatever it is that's kind of like neutral slash masculine is actually taking over quite quickly. Yeah, I'm not sure now. I love the opening, but this is changing really quickly and it's losing the aspects of it that I loved, which is a real shame. But I'm gonna give this a wearing nonetheless, and I'm gonna come back to you with a, with a little bit more about how it works out, because, I mean, if I don't give it a full wearing, and that would just be mental, wouldn't it? So we're gonna overspray. We'll do the back of the hand as well. Get it on the clothes, there we go. I think that's enough. <laughs> I think that's enough. So, woohoo. There might have been too much. We'll let that, um, so you know you know when the alcohol gets right up your nose? It's doing that. Almost like pepper, that sensation, like right there. Okay, that's better, it's clearing. I can actually taste it. <laughs> okay, that was too much. That was too much. But that will settle, I'm sure. And right now I probably am now too overwhelmed by it to really say much more. So I'm gonna come back to you later today with uh, my final thoughts and just some notes on how it's developed. Okay, so it's been an hour and I've been to the plumbing shop to buy, or no, not to buy, I had to take something back. I've got a problem with my outside toilet and it's a bloody pain in the arse actually. I don't use it, but, I've got a washing machine plumbed into the next uh, part of the outdoor building and I can't use the washing machine because the toilet keeps overflowing when the water's on out there so I have to turn the water off which means my washing is stacking up. So I went to the plumbing shop because the, I replaced the bits inside and it turns out there was a little bit that they sold me that wasn't quite right, it was moulded incorrectly so they've replaced that for me just try to put it in and screw it all on and everything and I just don't know what I'm doing and when you turn the water back on the water's spitting out so I've not screwed it on tight enough and it's still overflowing so the arm goes up but it goes it keeps going up the water starts overflowing it doesn't turn the water off so oh, it's a bit stressful I really need to do my washing anyhow that's not what you're here for so I've been to the plumbing shop uh, so I was there for a little while and I also went into the post office, had to send something off and I bought a couple of bits, some snacks to get me through tonight's night shift and some biscuits. And I didn't have breakfast, so I've just eaten three biscuits. Oops. Anyhow, let's talk about the perfume. So it's not a particularly strong one. Despite how much I sprayed, I could smell it if I take a deep breath in but it's not as strong as my average, if I average out the performance of my of my range of perfumes that I own, it's not as strong, it's less strong than the average. But it's strong enough for me because I can still smell it, albeit it's quite light. If you do that, you still it's still pretty light. But the good thing is, what I thought was vetiver, which there is no vetiver listed, I've just checked, what I thought was a sort of neutral, um, non-sweet note has calmed down. If I smell it right up close, it's, that's weird, it smelled a little bit rubbery. <laughs> I've, I've had me to my hands in the toilet. No, my hands are clean, I've washed them, I promise. Um, no, it doesn't smell rubbery. You can still smell, you can smell the cherry, but it's not as sweet as it was. It's not as prominent as it was. The almond element to it has really calmed down to almost barely being there. So it's, it just smells a bit cherry-like, which does have an almond facet anyway, if that makes sense. But it does smell like it's blended with some blonde woods, like clean blonde woods. It's actually different in different places. It might be the... It's caught on my jumper, so it's stronger on my on the cloth here, much stronger than it is on the skin. Anyhow, so it, it's quite a light scent in general, very translucent in the air, not one. I wouldn't say this is a, it's certainly not going to make a statement and it's certainly not going to be a fragrance that you wear for a big night out. I don't think, unless you generally just prefer a quiet scent. Um, it's the sort of thing I would just wear as a daily 
kind of, you know, go to the shops, uh, go for a walk, that kind of stuff. Even then, go if I'm going for a walk and it's chilly outside, I tend to want a bigger impact fragrance myself. That's just personal. If you work around people and you are uh, careful about what you wear for whatever reason, it could be a good one for that because it's a very pleasant scent and it's not too loud. Um, but there are plenty of options out there for that. You know, if you want something like that, it's one of many, many, many options. I do like it though. I don't love it at the moment. I really love the opening. And now, um, I don't know, it's a bit quiet for my taste already. You know, we're only an hour in and I did spray a lot. So, you know, for me, because I'm not generally that careful about what I wear, I tend not to go for quiet scents. It's not really going to be one I'm going to want to sort of radiate towards that often. But I do think if you're someone who doesn't have a, a big selection of fragrances, you enjoy a cherry scent that's not too ju It doesn't smell juvenile, so cherry could potentially go in a juvenile direction. Things like strawberry, cherry, they can tend to make people think of things that are aimed at children in general, like the sweets or the toys that are scented, kind of like that. It doesn't really do that because it's got a really nice sour element to it at the same time and it doesn't smell thick and syrupy and, or overtly vanilla-y. Now I did look up the notes, I'm not going to remember them all, I can tell you that there's mandarin and bergamot, so that's what gives you a little bit of freshness in the opening. But don't expect to really pick out either of those. Maybe a tiny bit of mandarin. It really, all it does is it adds some freshness without really, it doesn't take over. The other stuff is, is more dominant all the, all, all the way. Um, it's almost a slightly anacedic element to it smelling it like this, like a licorice. And I don't think there's licorice note listed in this version, although I'm pretty sure there is licorice in maybe the original or some of the other flankers. So it might be that there is a licorice note in here that's not listed. I'm gonna spray it on the other hand just to remind myself of the opening, but really I should just be telling you about the uh, what I've got now. Um, but I want to just respray it. I want to respray it because I love the opening. Mm. Well, that reminded me of something. Gorgeous cherry note in the opening. Yeah, it's like those maraschino cherries, the ones that you put in cocktails. When you used to have baby sham, I don't know, if, you know, depends what country you grew up in, I guess. But when I was younger, below the legal age to drink alcohol, my parents would let me sometimes have a baby sham which is a, like a fizzy wine a Prosecco type thing with a lower alcohol content. And you'd have it in a baby sham glass with a, a, the little deer motive on it and a cherry, or if you're lucky, two cherries on a cocktail stick in the drink. Oh my God, I actually, such nice memories. I think I'm gonna buy some baby sham and I've actually got some baby sham glasses, believe it or not, and I won't go into why I've got those. Um, this reminds me of the cherries that you put in cocktails sweet cherries but there is a sour sour bit to them as well and the sharp freshness there is something it's reminding me of i can't think what it's reminding me of exactly it might be one of the other mainstream guerlands not it's not a high-end guerland that it's reminding me of but there is like um a slightly savory note that's somewhere between hay and vetiver so the colour in my mind is like golden yellow just for that particular part of the fragrance this kind of like slightly hay-like element to it so that's the opening and I love that and the dry down has changed it's, quite, it's got like a clean muskiness just the merest hint of that cherry and clean wood so that's really all I get now there should be in here in the base there is patchouli and tonka I can't remember what the, all the other notes are there's oh there's a violet note in here which I don't get 
and I can't remember all the other notes. I'll put them on the screen now for you because, you know, it's good to know, isn't it? But really, I think I'm going to leave it there because we've gone on too long. So it's not a full review. You've only got the first hour and it's actually an hour and a quarter since I started recording it earlier. So it's only a uh, very brief impressions and it's gone on far too long and I do apologise. I'm really curious about the new one, the Nectar version. But the only way I could try that is if I blind bought it. And of course, because it's brand new, I'd have to pay full retail. And I'm not going to do that because I'm being financially savvy. Now, before I go, I'm going to leave you with my friend Ega. She's got a very special message and you need to listen to her, OK? If you like Claire's video, please comment, like and subscribe. I'm Ega from the channel Pixie in the Notes. Thank you, Ega. She is over on Pixie and the Notes. You can find her on YouTube and on Instagram. So please do check her out. Isn't she the most adorable and beautiful person? Thanks for watching. See you later.